In this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to knit your own Icelandic sweater, also called Lopipesa. The main recognizable feature of this sweater is a round yoke with a repeating pattern around the neck. The sweater is supposed to be knitted from 100% Icelandic wool, but nowadays there's a huge variety of designs and yarns that might be used for knitting Lopipesa-like sweaters. There are knitting features that are very special with Icelandic sweaters. The whole sweater is knitted bottom to top, where sleeves and body are knitted separately and then joined together approximately at the breast level. Due to decreasing number of stitches, we get to the neck level, where we bind off stitches. After that, armpit seams have to be joined using a needle. Here you'll find general information about yarn, necessary tools and where to find the pattern. Regarding the knitting part, I'm going to show how to test on stitches for cuffs and body to make them elastic and uh, good looking, how to work with the two and three color patterns, how to increase stitches, how to join sleeves and body together, how to decrease stitches, how to bind the rib of the neck that is also elastic and finally how to join armpit seams and hide the thread ends. The true Icelandic sweater is supposed to be knitted from Icelandic yarn such as Salafos Lopi or Salafos Let Lopi. I would recommend using this yarn as it has an amazing quality in a wide range of colors. At the moment I can buy this to show you as the company ships yarn to a limited number of countries and I'm not in any of them at the moment, but if you're lucky don't hesitate to try them. In my tutorial I will use another yarn produced by Infinity Design, their name is Tundra which is 100% wool. Very similar to it is Eskimo yarn produced by Drops. I like them because they are very similar to Alofo Sloppy. The thread is evenly felted, airy, warm and what is the main advantage of them? They are incredibly soft and gentle and clothes produced out of them can be used even by kids and people with sensitive skin. If you take Alofo's Sloppy yarn, drops Eskimo or Infinity Tundra you need next set of tools. Circle needle sizes 4.5 mm and 6 mm, about 80-120 cm long. These needles we will use to knit body and yoke. For sleeves you can take either the shortest possible circle needles 4.5 mm and 6 mm, which will work well for sleeves especially if you know the technique magic loop, but I prefer using five double pointed needles. I have both 4.5 mm and 6 mm and I'm going to use them to record this tutorial. Besides knitting needles, you might need a plastic needle like that. I was given it by my friend, but you can find it on Aliexpress or in any hobby shop. Price is about $1 for 10 needles, which is almost nothing, but uh, it's an absolutely handy tool to join armpit seams, for example. Markers, another small tool that facilitates your work. The price is about $1 for 30 markers. I use them everywhere, whatever I need. Markers are must have for everyone who likes knitting, actually. And finally crochet. I would recommend having at least one. Mainly I use uh, sizes 2 to 4 to hide the thread ends when I'm about to finish a knitting project. You might ask where I can find and download pattern? Good question. There are so many resources where you can find a pattern you like. Some of the patterns you can find on the website of Alafos, but um, a really big collection of patterns can be found on private web pages of different designers. And of course, Etsy and Ravelry are the biggest resources to find a suitable pattern. Read the description carefully 
as uh, many patterns could be for thinner yarns and therefore require thinner needles, for example, and uh, have other measurements. Pattern instruction will also recommend you how many yarns of every color you need to buy. Just uh, follow instructions. I'm creating patterns myself. Today I will use uh, this one, freshly made, not uh, tested yet. You take any pattern you like from the internet or a knitting magazine. Normally, when you start working on a new project and you are not familiar with yarn, you have to make a sample, just uh, plain knitting. The number of rows is not that important as in this sweater you can always measure the length of the sleeves or body using a measuring tape. The most important is to understand how tight you need. For this purpose we do need a sample. You can knit a small piece like that, but here I have my own sample, actually uh, just used the sweater I knitted before. I take the measuring tape and count stitches. Using Alafo Sloppy you're supposed to have 13 stitches of 10 cm having 6 mm needles. I do need slightly tighter 14 stitches of 10 cm. Therefore, if I want to get the right size, I will take 1-2 sizes bigger. Accordingly, if your knitting is smoother, take the 1-2 size smaller. Finally, after all preparations, finding the pattern, buying yarns, measuring the gauge, choosing a suitable size, we are ready to start. I do start with the sleeves. First, we learn how to cast on stitches for the rib as it looks tight, tidy and of course, it must be elastic. You can cast on stitches the way you normally do. Before, I didn't pay much attention to the rib part and my rib looked like this. I check the size I need, I take M size and look at how many stitches I need for the sleeve. It says 40. Because I have my own way of casting on stitches for the rib, first what I do, I calculate how many stitches do I need. It will be half of the stitches plus 1 to join the round. Therefore I get 20 plus 1. 21. I take an additional contrast thread and cast on 21 stitches on the double pointed needle size 4.5 mm. We take the smaller needle to make our rib tighter than the rest of the sweater, right? It doesn't really matter how do you cast on stitches as uh, there are many methods that exist. All of them, as far as I'm concerned, will work well. Then I distribute 21 stitches on 4 needles. You don't need to do it if you use technique magic loop. And then I join the round. Look how I'm doing it. Make sure that the whole line of stitches is not twisted. I grab the first stitch from the left needle and at the same time I grab the last stitch from the right needle and one goes through another. After that I take my working thread and knit three rows of purl stitches, as simple as that. Finally, after these three rows, I need to double the number of stitches. I need 40, not 20 as I have now. Let's see. The first stitch I make is a purl stitch that is already on the left needle. Now be attentive. If you look at the first row of our stitches, you will see the working thread is in between the extra thread that we used for casting on. And there are loops in between the lines. 
what do I do with them? I lift the first loop, place the loop on the left needle and make a knit stitch. Then I make a purl stitch from the left needle and repeat with lifting knit stitch from the first row. Very simple, isn't it? Just keep doing this way until you finish with the last stitch. All 40 stitches are on the needles. Now we need an ordinary rib, which is one purl stitch, one knit stitch. And continue this way until I get, let's say, 4-6 cm of the rib pattern. My rib is ready. The final step here is to cut the extra thread, pull it out and admire the beginning of our work. Now I check my instructions and they say that I need to change the size of the needles to 6 mm and even increase the number of stitches. In my case the number of stitches is 42, now I have 40, therefore I need to increase 2 stitches in total, one after every 20 stitches. I show you how I am doing it. In the next round I just leave the thread from the bridge in between stitches and twist it. Here we are. If you need to add another number of stitches, just do simple calculations on how you distribute them evenly on your needles. At the same time you change the size of the needle, don't forget about that. Now I have all stitches on my needles to start working with the pattern. I find a chart made for sleeves. Here it is. The pattern is repeating every 6 stitches. I take an additional color and join it to my knitting. I simply just keep the thread tight during the first stitches, tighten it up and at the very end when I will be ready with the whole sweater I will hide the ends. I place the collar that I'm going to work in mainly on my uh, finger and the second collar I place on another finger. This way they don't tangle much. Because I use four needles I have to be extra careful to do call work as um, while I'm changing the needle I can accidentally tighten the thread up on opposite leave it too loose. My advice is to use a super short circle needle if you can afford to buy them. Otherwise uh, just be more patient and take it easy round by round. Fortunately the sleeve pattern is not too long. I do alternate colors according to the pattern. Hooking one color from above, another under. We keep knitting the whole pattern like this. In the pattern I can see how many stitches in total I need to increase knitting the sleeve. Here for example it says that I need to increase 2 stitches every 8th row 6 times. Here start using markers to count rows. I do increase one stitch at the beginning of the row and one in the end. I make two stitches and then I pull the thread out of the bridge after the second stitch, place it on the left needle and knit twisted. Then I knit the whole round except for the last two stitches. I have two stitches of the row left and again I pull out the thread, this time from the bridge two stitches before the end of the row, place it on the needle and knit it twisted. Now we have the first increased row. After that I knit the rest of the rows, I have seven left. After eighth row 
I move my marker up there to make it obvious where do I start counting again. I do the round increasing stitches and then again knit 7 rows. In my case I have to do it 6 times. Check your pattern how many times and how often you need to increase stitches. After increasing the last time, I keep knitting rows until I reach the recommended length. Heat says 47 cm, but you can definitely adjust the length to the length of your arms or just uh, add a couple of centimeters if you like long sleeves. I finish the sleeve and going to set it aside. I replace all stitches on the contrast thread because I will need needles again to knit another sleeve. I'll be ready with the second sleeve and come back to you with the next video where I will knit the body and join it together with the both sleeves and start working on the yoke. If you find this information useful, like the video and subscribe to the channel to not miss more tutorials. See you in the next video.